the Lord gave me a word. Amen? I said the Lord gave me a word. Yeah, every voice participating. You know that song we just sang? And with one voice. Right? Everyone. I want everyone like a trumpet. Amen? Everyone participating. The Lord gave me a word, and I'm going to be short. I'm going to be about 20 minutes here. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord gave me a word two weeks after the election, okay? As, as I was praying, I was praying in tongues, and, you know, concerning the election, and then two weeks later, you know, everything going on, I was praying in tongues, and the Lord gave me one word. Hallelujah. Say one word. One word. Yeah, that one word was turn around. Yeah. Yeah, hallelujah. I like that little laugh by Twinkle, twink, Tinkerbell over there. Hallelujah. Yeah, turn around was the word. Amen? So, 2021 will be a year of turnaround. Amen. Hallelujah. 2021 will be a year of turnaround. Praise God. I thank God that God gave us, has been giving us a word every year. He's been giving us a word for fire at the altar. So, 2021 will be a year of turnaround for those in the spirit. Yeah, you know why? Because the promises of God cannot be received in the flesh. It's only for those who are in the spirit, those who are walking in the spirit. So as you and I are walking in the spirit or in truth, right, in obedience to what God is telling us to do, what happened? The promises of God will be manifested in your life as you walk. So you have to receive it in the spirit. Remember, everything is of the Father, through the Son, in the Spirit. Everyone say, of the Father, through the Son, in the Spirit, or by the Spirit. So when, we and, when you and I are in the Spirit, then we can receive the promises of God. You can't receive the, the promises of God in the flesh. The flesh is the wrong position, the wrong place. You can't receive if you're in the wrong place. Are you with me? So you have to be in the Spirit to receive it, okay? Now... So 2021 will be a year of turnaround. Hallelujah. There's been much loss in people's lives. People have lost their life, businesses, finances, all different types of things. They've been lost. But this is the year of turnaround. Amen. And I thank God that God's people at fire at the altar, we actually have increased in 2021. It's amazing. God has protected us and God has increased this house. Hallelujah. We haven't suffered loss. Some people drowned in the crossover. But that's not my responsibility. They drown. But what I'm saying is this. Those who have crossed over, we've been blessed. This ministry has, has experienced the, the greatest a year financially. Yeah, with people leaving the greatest year this year. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's only been increased. It's only been increased. But we do realize that people have suffered loss. There have been people that suffer a lot, but I'm here to declare, not only to God's people here, but those who are hearing, because people will hear this message, that 2021 will be a year of turnaround. Hallelujah. It's going to be a year of turnaround in your finances, in your business. Hallelujah. In your ministry, in your health, in your spiritual life, in your vision, in your relationship. God is going to do a turnaround in your life. Hallelujah. All right. Now, what is a turnaround? A turnaround is a U-turn. A turnaround is a reversal. Hallelujah. A turnaround is about face. It's a switch. It's a changeover. And I like to use the word crossover. Amen. It's a changeover. It's a switch. So any change from one thing to its opposite is considered a turnaround. Example, if you are on a sports team and you guys are losing 20 to zip. But by the end of the game, you end up winning 31-20. That's a drastic turnaround. Hallelujah. You started on a decline. You started down, you know, sliding down. But it turned around dramatically and you ended up winning 31-20. to That's a dramatic turnaround. And that's what God's going to do with many of us in this place. Hallelujah. And those who are hearing, there will be a dramatic turnaround in your life. Everything that, that happened in 2020 that was negative, God is about to turn it around in your life. Those who have lost, you are about to recover and restore what you lost in 2020. It's so important you mix your faith with the word. You want to turn it around, you got to mix your faith. Now, 
So some will receive drastic turnarounds. Some will receive dramatic turnarounds. Some will receive just a regular turnaround. It all depends according to your faith. 30, 60, 100 fold. Turnaround, dramatic turnaround, or a drastic turnaround. Depending what you want. Hallelujah. God is about to do this in all these areas that I, I just mentioned. Look, in 2008, we all know what happened with the economy. What happened? The stock market crashed. Crashed, correct? In 2008, people lost millions. People even killed themselves because of the money they lost. People lost jobs. People lost homes in 2008. Businesses went down the tank in 2008. Then what happened? About in 2010, they began to experience a turnaround, correct? That's when everything, the economy started kicking back, right back up in 2010. It's amazing that 10 years later, we're in the same boat. In 2020, a lot of losses. People lost homes, people lost jobs, people lost business, Bus businesses have closed. Even churches, pastors have been affected. Some churches have closed down in 2020. That's sad, but some churches have closed down. There was a pastor that wanted to open up, and the, pa and the people said, we don't want live service no more, we just want to be online. And he had to close his church. Can you imagine they're paying, they're leasing a, 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 a building, and the people don't want to come back into the building. And there was a pastor here in Tampa, but thank God, not fire at the altar, amen? Yeah. I was going to continue, even if it was me, my wife, and my mother-in-law. <laughs> Hallelujah. But 2010, uh, it began to turn around a decade ago, and now this is the same thing that's going to happen in 2021. That what was lost in 2020 will be restored and recovered in 2021. And God's people said? All right. A turnaround represents an upward shift. Hallelujah. It means an upward shift after a negative experience. It means Im improvement. So what we're going to do is we have to convert our loss into gain. Out with the old and in with the new. We're going to recover what was lost and recover what was lost. Amen. So what do we have to do in order to do all these things? We have to acknowledge. Acknowledge our problems. We have to consider changes. Okay. So first we acknowledge it. Right. When you have an issue, you and I must acknowledge the issue. Not avoid the issue. How many know that avoiding an issue never solves anything. And a lot of people just put it under the rug. And by the time you look three years later, that thing is a monster under that rug. So even though it might be uncomfortable, we have to confront. We have to, you know, go and see for what it is. So it's very important in order for this turnaround to happen that we acknowledge the problems. And then consider the changes, correct? Correct. You have to find out the things that need to be changed in your life. And then come up with the solution. How many problem solvers I have here? Well, some of them. Say amen. Say something. I, I said, how many problem solvers I have here? Some of you didn't say amen because you are the problem. Are you with me? I said, how many problem solvers I have here? Amen. God... Yes, I like making Glenda laugh. God created you to solve a problem. Say, I am a solution to a problem. You want to know what your assignment is? Your assignment is the problem you solve. That's your assignment. You come in here to fire at the altar. You say, man, they're missing toilet paper in the bathroom. So that's your assignment, making sure there's toilet paper in the bathroom. <laughs> so, when you identify and recognize a problem, instead of complaining about it, not you, instead of complaining about it, no, this is an example, right? Instead of complaining about it, you come up with the what? You guys know. You see how the Lord teaches you? You already know the answer. You come up with the solution. You are the solution to the problem. Are you with me? So that's what your assignment is. When God created your physical body, he made your eyes to solve a problem. What do your eyes do? See. You solve the problem of seeing. What does your nose do? Smell. God solved the problem. You can smell. What about your ears? What do your, your ears do? They hear. What does your mouth do? Talk, taste. 
eat. <laughs> so everything in your physical body is created to solve a problem. Because you were made to solve a problem. God created you to solve a problem and not be the problem, but solve the problem. And God's people said, yeah. say it again. I am a problem solver. In 2021, I will solve problems. Hallelujah. Come on. Don't be the problem. Be the problem solver. Now, so these seven areas, and we're going to go through it like, like lightning. Number one. The turnaround that you're going to experience is the turnaround in your finances. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, in your finances. You're going to experience a turnaround. Many have lost. Thank God many in fire the altar have increased. But we're going to increase even more. But if, you can, if you've experienced loss, get ready for a turnaround in your financial life. Because God wants you to prosper. We see in Exodus chapter 12, verse 35, we see... On the day of Passover, God tells Israel, kill the lamb and eat the lamb. And what are to do with the blood of the lamb? Apply it over the doorpost. When the deaf angel comes, you'll pass over that house. Okay? And then, not only that, what else took place? Right before they left Egypt, God gave Moses instructions. You ought to tell the people, go knock on the Egyptians' doors. Knock on the door and tell them to give you their money, all the silver, all the gold, and their clothes. So watch this. You talk about a turnaround. The children of Israel were in bondage for 430 years. Before they were favored, under Joseph, when Joseph was the prince, the governor of Egypt, they were favored. But then as time went by, and as new pharaohs rose up, these new pharaohs were not looking at the children of Israel with favor. They were looking at them with despise. The and what happened? These people were blessed financially. They had property. They had land. But it was taken from them. And now they became the slaves of Egypt. So then what happened? They went from being blessed from prosperity to poverty. They went from liberty to slavery. They went from liberty to bondage. Right? Because they became slaves. 430 years. But then God says, that's it. I'm showing up for my people and they, there shall be a turnaround in their lives. Yeah. So the first thing he did was he blessed them financially. Hallelujah. He protected them physically and then blessed them financially. Right before they left Egypt. Look at verse 35. Exodus chapter 12 verse 35. Now the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses. It's very important that we do, according to the word. And they had asked from the Egyptians, what? Articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing. And verse 36, and the Lord had given the people favor. Everyone say favor. favor. In the sight of the Egyptians, so that they granted them what they requested. Thus, they plunder the Egyptians. You know what the word plunder means? It means strip. They took away. They snatched away. They knocked on the door, give me all your money. It's a stick up. Here's all the silver, all the clothing. Can you imagine the wife saying, no, no, I like that Louis Vuitton purse there. Give me that. And then as they kept looking inside the house, they said, I like that over there too. Give me that. They, these people, they left the Egyptians butt naked. And they came out with all the, the finest clothes of Egypt. All the silver, all the gold. They went from poverty to prosperity in one hour. From bondage to liberty in one hour. From sickness to health in one hour. After they obey, after the Passover. Because once you partake of Jesus, my brother, that's when the turnaround takes place. The lamb is Jesus. Once they partook and ate of Jesus, the turnaround began. You cannot experience turnaround in your life without Christ. People are trying to experience a turnaround without Christ. No, no. You experience the turnaround with Christ. In Christ is when true turnaround takes place. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little excited. A little excited. Don't let me preach calm like some people. Hallelujah. So they came. They went from poverty to riches in one hour. A turnaround. And as every family. Can you imagine? Two, three million people. Every household of the children of Israel experienced prosperity. Every house 
it wasn't just some people of God. It was the whole house at the same time. The whole church at the same time. As it happened with Israel, I declare and decree a fire at the altar. Prosperity in this house. Prosperity in this house. I said prosperity in this house. Every family in this house. But you got to do according to the word of the Lord. If you don't do according to the word, you ain't going to experience it. Remember, you experience the promises of God in the spirit, not in the flesh. How are you in the flesh when you're not obeying the word? But if you're in the spirit, you're in the spirit when you're obeying the word. I'm about to lay hands on her. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the spirit. Obedience puts you in the spirit. Obeying the word puts you in the spirit. And now you're in, in, in the right position to receive all the blessings of God. And God's people said, how many are in the right position to receive the blessings of God? Amen. And you got to turn around. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's keep going. In Psalms 104, thank you, Jesus. 105, I'm sorry. Psalms 105. Remember, they took all the silver, all the gold, all the clothing. That was to fulfill prophecy because in Genesis 15, 14, Abraham, God prophesied to Abraham through a vision that the descendants of Abraham were going to go into slavery and be in bondage for 400 years, but God was going to take them out after 400 years, but they were going to come out with great possessions. That's Genesis 15, 14. You can look at it later. They were going to come out with great possessions. So God prophesied this, that they were going to come out with all the silver and all the gold. Now watch this, but in Psalms 105, verse 37, he also brought them out with silver and what? Gold. Gold. And there was none feeble among his tribes. Everyone was healed. They came out prosperous and they come out healed. Feeble means weak. There was not one weak person, not one sick person. Everybody was healed. After they partook of Passover. My God, hallelujah. So everyone, can you imagine every house prospering? Wealth in every house. In two, three million people, every house. It wasn't just the Sanchez residence or the La Barca residence prospering. Every house, every last name of every person in this house prospering financially. So that's the first thing God is going to do. It's going to be a, a turnaround in your financial life. You're going to go from debt to freedom. You're going to go from being the tail to being the head. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to go from borrowing to being the Hallelujah. You're going to lend and you shall not borrow. In the name of Jesus. All right. That's the first thing. The second thing. Go to Zechariah. The second thing you're going to experience turn around is your business. You say, Pastor, but I don't have a business. Well, I pray God give you a business. Hallelujah. You know that God puts things in your heart that you never even thought of. You know that, right? Sometimes, man, I never thought about owning a business. I remember when Shelly said, I, never, I wasn't even thinking about buying a place. But pastor and his parents and, and the in-laws got a house. I want to get a place myself. It just triggered her to go get one. Then Margaret said, you know what? I want one too. And Margaret went and got her place too. Hallelujah. Some of you have businesses. Some of you are about to start a business. Hallelujah. So get ready for a turnaround in your business. If you suffer any loss, turn around. Look at Zechariah chapter 4, verse 9. Remember Zerubbabel. Everyone say Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was a governor. God told Zerubbabel to start building the temple of God. He began building the temple of God by faith. But how many know when God speaks to you, sometimes you get discouraged? Because you start working on what God told you to do, and what happens? People don't cooperate with you. Hello? Anybody experience that? Or it's just pastor? People don't want to cooperate. God told Zerubbabel. To go build the house of God, the temple of God. But the people didn't want to cooperate with the temple building, with the house of God. So what happened? Zerubbabel, he began to get a little discouraged. But thank God, God sent prophets to Zerubbabel to stir him up. And the spirit of the Lord came upon Zerubbabel. And God raised up a remnant. Hallelujah. I thank God for the remnant I fire at the altar. There might be people that don't want to lay a hand, but God will send them, hallelujah, from the north, south, east, and west. I I said this years ago. I said, if you don't do what God has called you to do here, God will send people from the outside. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Now watch this. Zerubbabel began to build. Discouragement came, but the Lord 
Gave him a prophetic word, strength in his hands. And verse 9 in the New Living Translation says, Zerubbabel is the one who laid the foundation of this temple and he will complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of heaven's armies has sent me. Zechariah said, do not despise these small what? beginnings. For the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hands. So here we see, as he began taking care of the business of building the temple, God strengthened his, his hand and blessed the work of his hands. And as you begin your business, God's going to bless the work of your hands. And if you suffer any loss, God is going to turn it around to financial gain in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I declare and decree financial turnaround, turnaround in your business, prosperity in your business in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. The third thing that's going to happen. Remember, God promises to bless the work of your hands. So get to work. As you work, the blessing is going to flow. No work, no anointing. Once you put your hand to the plow, bang, the anointing begins to flow. So it's all about working, right? Once you begin to work, the anointing will come. Amen? Number three, the third turnaround will be your ministry. Hallelujah. There's going to be a turnaround in your ministerial life. This is not just applicable to pastors, but if there's any pastor hearing this, you might be experiencing some uh, trembling times. But God's about to turn that thing around in Jesus' name. He's about to send you some remnant to help you, to help you to build the vision that God has given you. He'll send them from the north, south, east, and west. Do not be discouraged, ministers of God. We see here the ministry. The turnaround in the ministry. Some of you are laying dormant with gifts and talents. You haven't used them in years. It's about to come out. There's a turnaround. Hallelujah. Rivers are going to begin to flow out of you. Amen. The volcano is about to erupt. Amen. Hallelujah. Everyone here is called to ministry. So don't think that this is for pastors only. This is for every saint in the house of God. Ministry Every believer, the day you got born again, a ministry was given to you. Because God imparted gifts and talents. And those gifts and talents are not to be buried on the ground. Those gifts and talents are to be used for the edification of the building of the kingdom of God. So when we talk about ministry, say, oh, that's not me. No, that's you. You've been born again. you in ministry. Ministry means to serve God with the gifts and talents that God has given you. Hallelujah. So there's going to be a turnaround. Some of you didn't have the opportunity to use your gifts, but it's going to happen this year. Hallelujah. And some of you haven't taken the step forward because of fear or you're just distracted. Oh, distraction. I hate distraction. I hate distraction. People get distracted. Luke chapter 3, verse 23. It says, now Jesus began his ministry at about 30 years of age. So we see here, he began. There's always a beginning. There's always a beginning. Are you with me? God began to you Moses at 80. There was a beginning for Moses. For Jesus, it was at 30. God prepared Jesus for 30 years for this moment. In his ministry, his public ministry. So there's always a beginning. So Ephesians 4.12, you don't have to turn to it. Remember, God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for what? For the equipping of the saints. Who are the saints? Equip them for what? To watch television? Hello? Equip them for what? For the what? For the work? Some of you got allergic reaction when I say work. I see the pimples coming out. For the work of ministry. The work of ministry. So my job is to equip you so you can work. Are you with me? Or let pastor take care. No, pa that's not pastor's job. Pastor's job to equip you so you can do it. Let's get this thing straight here. Just in case you had it twisted. You need a turnaround in your theology, on your doctrine. And I know your doctrine is right. Because what's preached here is right. We don't preach crazy doctrine here. But somehow, when you hear it here, the devil does something in your head. Then you leave here with a twisted doctrine. I straighten the thing out by the power of God. 
And listen, everyone is called to ministry. Our job is to equip you so you can do the work. Then you come back with a report like spies. The land is good, pastor. We lay hands and cast this devil out the other day. Whew, hallelujah. We lay hands and heal this person the other day. Hallelujah. Pastor, we lay hands on this person. They got baptized with the Holy Spirit. Say, oh, hallelujah. Pastor, we went into this home and everyone in the house got saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's my job. That's my rejoicing. My rejoicing is not when I'm preaching here. My rejoicing is when you come back with the testimony of what God has done with you. That's when I really rejoice. <laughs> hallelujah. That's my joy. Maybe for some pastors, their joy is to preach on Sunday. My, my rejoicing is to see how your spiritual life is moving along. And when it's not moving along, I want to kick you along. <laughs> Hallelujah. For the work of ministry. <sighs> Hallelujah. Look at Colossians chapter 4 verse 17. We have to finish. No, we don't. Why are we in a rush? <laughs> Colossians chapter 4 verse 17. Look at what Paul says. And say to Archippus, Colossians 4 17. And say to Archippus, take heed... To the ministry which you have received in the Lord, that you may what? Fulfill it. So what do you and I have to do, Glenda, with the gifts and talents that God has given us? God is saying, take heed. Pay attention to what God has given you, what you have received. There are things that you already have received in the Lord. And you're trying to make believe not you haven't received anything. So that you don't take the uh, responsibility of doing anything. But that's not happening, brother. When God gives you that talent, you're responsible. And the Bible says in the parable, the master is coming back to see what did you do with the talent that I gave you. You think God baptized you with the Holy Spirit so you can do nothing? Are you kidding me? The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is to do the work of ministry. Work of ministry doesn't mean pulpit right here. Work ministry is everywhere you go. So he says, take heed to the ministry you have received from the Lord. Don't bury the gifts, the talent, the anointing that God has given you. Oh, pastor, but my anointing is small. Use it and it'll multiply. You don't use the anointing that God has given you. If you despise the anointing that God has given you, it will never increase in your life. You have to appreciate. He told Zacharias, through Zechariah to uh, Zerubbabel, do not despise small beginnings. I don't care if it's like my sister Margaret does, vacuum cleaner. That's the anointing there. That's the talent there. That's where God has you. Do it. And watch multiplication and spiritual promotion. How, how, God is about to promote people in the spirit this year. Amen. Hallelujah. Promotion in the spirit is coming. And many of you are still flying in. 1,000 feet, you should be 20,000 feet, 30,000 feet. But there's going to be a turnaround in your ministry, in your life. Recognize it. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Give me another chance. God says, yes, I'll give you another chance. Let's go. Come on. I've been waiting for you to say yes. I've been waiting for you to respond. Now, number four, your health is going to be restored. Mark chapter 5, I'm not going to read it because it's too much. You already know the, the woman with the issue of blood. She came around, she said, if I may only touch the hem of his garment. You know she was sick how many years? 18? No, that's another lady. 12 years. That's the, the Luke chapter uh, 11 is the other lady that was bent for 18 years. 12 years she was sick. And the Bible says she went to every doctor. No one can heal her. She got worse. She visited every doctor she could for 12 years, got worse, and she was broke. Because the Bible says she spent all her money. So she was broke and sick. That's a bad combination, brother. Get anyone depressed. Broke and sick. She was broke and sick. But Jesus. Everyone say, but Jesus. Her health was declining for 12 years. But when she encountered Jesus, her health inclined. Hallelujah. Every time you have an encounter with Jesus, it's always increase. It's always an incline. Hallelujah. It's always for, for your profit. So we see that she was healed. Her health 
was restored. And I declare and decree that your health be restored in this place if you've been battling with sickness, that it be restored. If there's anyone watching this or hearing this, that your health be restored in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree the healing power of God as you heal the sound of my voice. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity and sickness now in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. A restoration of health. Go to Jeremiah chapter 30, quick. Jeremiah chapter 30. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. For I will restore health to you. Hallelujah. And I will heal you of thy wounds, says the Lord. So verse 17 says, I will restore health. It's going to be a turnaround in people's physical body. In the name of Jesus, God is going to restore the health of many. The fifth thing God's going to do, and we're almost done. Your spiritual life is going to do a turnaround. Many are struggling with their walk with God. This year, there shall be a turnaround in your spiritual life. Some of you are cold and dry, but you're about to get hot and on fire for God. Hallelujah. How? How can I get on fire for God? Acts chapter 3 verse 19 is all there. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent. Hallelujah. You want fire in your life? You got to repent. You got to say, Lord, I'm sorry for my lukewarmness. I'm sorry for being dry and cold with you. I repent for not seeking you. I repent for neglecting time with you. And once you repent, it turns. Then what happens? It says repent and be what? Converted. Converted means to return, to come back. It means to turn again, to reverse. Come back to the Lord. Listen, the message of coming back to the Lord is not for the unbeliever. It's for the church. Because we were once with him and we turned away and we have to come back. You can be in church here, sitting down, listening to the sound of my voice and backsliding right where you're at. You're listening to the word of the Lord and you're backsliding because your heart is cold towards the Lord. But if you repent and you convert and come back, reverse and go back, the fire of God will come upon your heart. It says, repent and be converted that your sins may be what? Hello, are you guys listening back there? I know there's a lot of distractions. Come on. That your sins may be blotted out. Blotted out means to wipe away, to erase, to obliterate. So the blood of Jesus obliterates, wipes out completely your sins. So that what? Watch this. So that times of refreshing come from where? The presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing. You know what's times of refreshing? The word refreshing means you'll breathe easy again. Not physically, spiritually. You'll breathe easy again. Watch this. Refreshing means recovery of breath. Recovery of breath. We're talking about spiritual breath. Spiritual life. You guys better listen to this. I know your body is weary. That's not my problem. I'm talking to your spirit, man, not to your physical body. A recovery of breath. Many need a recovery of the breath of God. Again. Remember Ezekiel and the dry bones? Uh Uh-huh. What happened? Dead bones there. Those people were once alive. Then they died. Revival of the people who were once alive, but now have died spiritually. But the will bring life back again so refreshing means to breathe easy again spiritually it means the recovery of breath it means to revive with a fresh air revival hallelujah come on fresh air revival how many want to experience revival once again how many want to go back to their first love first love first love the way you love jesus when you first got saved come on Jesus is saying, come back to your first love. Oh, I've been serving God for 40 years. I don't care how long you've been serving God. 40, those years don't count. It's what you're doing now. 
How you're walking with God now. Oh, I experienced that fire. I don't care what you experienced last week. It's now. Fresh breath. Recovery of breath. The breath of God. The breath of God is the Spirit of God. Reviving you spiritually once again. Glory. I don't want to hear stories. Now it's okay. Get, hear what I'm saying. I don't want to hear stories. This is what God used to do with me before. Well, what, 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 what he's doing with you now. Forget about what he's doing with you before. I got a lot of stories of what God did with me last week. But forget that. Forgetting those things which are behind and pressing forward for the things which are ahead. So times of refreshing speaks of recovery of the breath of God. Let's all stand up to our feet. I'm almost done. Because you're getting weary on me. Hallelujah. That's why you need to work on your spiritual stamina in your house. Amen. Recovery of breath. Revival with fresh breath. Hallelujah. Listen. This is a time for incline. It's not a time for decline. Some of you say, I didn't have time. We were in 2020. We had a lot of time. Many were quarantined. There was plenty of time. The excuse that there wasn't time, that's an excuse. And laziness plus excuses equals unfaithfulness. Laziness plus excuses equals unfaithfulness. Yeah. So watch this. It's not a matter of time. It has nothing to do with that. You didn't have time. No. You had time. You just didn't make time. Because you made time for the beach. You make time for bush gardens. You make time for this. You make time for that. Don't give me that lame, crippled excuse. We all can make time. How many are going to make time to seek the Lord? You have to. You have to. That's your life. Don't be the walking dead. We, we need to make time for the Lord. Neglecting time with God, high price. We're going to sow, sow in the spirit, we'll reap in the spirit. But get ready. Turn around in your spiritual life. That's why I started the service saying it's up to you. It's all up to you. I can preach till my hair turns gray or falls off. Father, I thank you for increase. Hair or no hair, I'm still good looking. Hallelujah. No, I'm playing. Mark chapter 8, I'll just read it. We see that Jesus experiences a blind man. He came to Bethsaida and brought, they brought to him a blind man. And he begged them to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit, he spit on his eyes. This is what the Bible said. And put his hands on him. He put his hands on him. He asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again. Jesus laid hands twice here. And made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. There's going to be a turnaround in your vision. Some of you had a loss of vision. But God's going to restore your spiritual vision. Are you ready for that? Be and why did you lose your spiritual vision? Because you neglected Jesus. You know, you can be right for a while, seeing things right, walking. But once you neglect, you start losing vision. Spiritually, that happens to all of us. We get cataracts. We start losing vision. Why? Because we take our eyes away from the Lord. Once you take your eyes away from the Lord, you're taking your eyes away from life. From the way. He's the way. He's the life. We start losing our life when we're not looking at Jesus. We lose our life because he is life. So our vision will be restored. There'll be a turnaround in your spiritual vision. You once saw clear. Now you have some cataracts, but there'll be a turnaround now. Those cataracts are about to fall off in Jesus' name. And watch this. When Jesus laid hands on the blind man, who's the first person the blind man saw? Not a trick question. Jesus. That's what it's all about. You know that your spiritual vision has been restored when you're looking at Jesus. When, you, when the first person you see is Jesus. Hallelujah. First love. You're seeing Jesus again. You're seeing the Lord again. And then what happens? Life comes when you see right. When you see the Lord who is life. Did you guys like that? 
So the first one you're going to see is Jesus once your spiritual sight is restored. You, you know, some, some believers, they don't even talk about Jesus. You could be around them for an hour. They never even mention the Lord. Nothing. Nothing's coming out of it. Other stuff comes out, but the Lord doesn't come up because they lost sight of Jesus. When your sight is restored, you'll be talking about Jesus. You'll be talking about the Lord. You'll be talking about the things of God. Hallelujah. Your conversations will be about the things of God. Why? Because your vision is restored once again. You're seeing properly. And now you found the way once again. Who's the way? Jesus. And we end with this. Your relationship will be, relationships will be restored. Remember Jesus, uh, Peter denied Jesus three times. How many times? Okay. I don't know him. I don't know him. And he even cursed at one of them. He said, blankety, blank, blank, blank. I don't know him. Yeah. Yeah. And he cursed. And Jesus told him, you're going to deny me. Oh, no, not me. I'm ready to die for you. When the test comes, you failed. It's okay. The Lord is merciful and gracious. What happens? In John chapter 21, Jesus raised from the dead, shows up, and they find the disciples. Jesus finds the disciples, and Jesus begins to eat breakfast with them. The Lord loves to eat. Amen? In John 21, it says, so when they had, when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, then feed my lambs. And he asked them again, a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. Asked them again, the third time, Simon, Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Here we see a turnaround in the relationship that Peter had with the Lord. He went from denying him three times to being restored once again. So the relationship that Peter had with the Lord was once again restored. It turned in his favor once again. And now he began to walk with the Lord once again after he denied him. Listen, he could have walked in condemnation his whole life. He could have said, man, I, I rejected Jesus. I said no to three different people. It wasn't the same person asking. Three different people asked him, do you know me? Do you know him? Do you know him? Three times said no, no, no to three different people. He could have walked in condemnation, but the Lord came and restored a turnaround in his walk with the Lord. And Peter never again denied him. Never again. Tradition says Peter was crucified upside down. Tradition says that. He said, I'm not worthy to be crucified upside up like my Lord. Please put me upside down. Wow. You know what's to be crucified upside down? Man, that's torture. But that's what tradition says, that Peter was crucified upside down. So we see here there shall be a turnaround in your finances, in your business, in your ministry, in your health, your spiritual life, your vision, and your relationships. Hallelujah. And Father, I thank you for the God's people here.